Ooh. We're gonna need something for that door. Damn! So you really did see THE Elias Gallagher? And would we like more flowers in this bouquet? Yes, I think so. What would you say to lemon balm? I'd ask how closely related they are to lemons. <laughs> oh my gosh! He's a comedian! Lovely, the warnings are right there. I guess let's read it out loud, since some, nobody listens unless I read it. <laughs> Warning! This game is intended for an, for audience ages 18 years or older! And incorporates mature themes including blood, body horror, child abuse, death, disability and ableism. Divorce, dissociation, drug use, forced marriage, medical error, self-harm, sexual content, traumatic flashbacks, and violence. By clicking confirm, you affirm that you are an adult of 18 years or older willing to interact with such content. Confirm. Hello everybody, I'm Degenerate, and welcome to the Groom of Gallagher Mansion. This is by the same person who made the other two games I played, Sunny Day Jack and Dachable Pet Sim. Let's begin! Why not? <laughs> uh oh. The stories I've heard about the old Gallagher Mansion. Spooky. The tales and whispers and rumors. Home to decadence and luxury in the days of yore. Now abandoned out of fear and left to rot. <laughs> what fucking. What is that word? <laughs> the upfucks. Ah. Uh, Upfuscated? Yeah. <laughs> Photos, the promise of lost inheritance, and a history stained by misfortune and blood, spilt in greed and ambition. None of them have done this place justice. Quite the opposite, in fact. They all made it sound much more exciting. A quick look at Gallagher Mansion doesn't suggest anything special. It's just one of many other ancient, abandoned, century-plus-old estates around here. This border is so cool. I like when uh, games do that. <laughs> I never got the hype. These dis dis decrepit. Mm hmm, I got that one. Old places litter this town like fallen leaves. No one has bothered to rick up. It's a spot for college dorks to drink and hope no one notices. Bro. An occasion, occasional haunted house for young adventurers and home to a few basic ghost stories that some of the other locals take pride in. Heritage and horror in one neat package. You'd never notice anything extraordinary just by looking at it. Sure, close to midnight, an eerie old mansion far off the main road will spook you well enough, especially if you're alone. Luckily, I'm neither one of those things. Well, technically I am alone, but not by myself. I fondle the phone in my hands for comfort while trying to avoid the thorns, oh, the thorns of roses. No need to prick myself just yet, according to Taylor. Who's Taylor? <laughs> Gallagher Mansion is abandoned. It's been abandoned for most of its existence. So why does it look like a pile of splinters? Why are the grounds not overgrown, with weeds and vines and poison ivy? Team, do you copy? What's the situation on the field? Over! <laughs> I was gonna do it, I was gonna... <laughs> Let's just say we got a Brit on our hands. Vice President. 
Doing fine, Taylor. In fact, I'm a little disappointed. I was hoping for something more than a light breeze. Maybe a darker and stormier night to really set the mood. Dot, dot, dot. Over. Oh my gosh. Ha. <laughs> Don't jinx yourself now, buddy. Optimal weather conditions will make the mission easier for you and me both. Over. Over. <laughs> you know, you don't need to say over when you're on a phone call, right? We can both talk and hear each other at the same time. Over. So you're gonna say it anyway? A pause. I couldn't- I could almost feel Taylor's pout on the other side of the line. I'm serious, though. So far, this may as well be an evening stroll. Keep your guard up! If my sources are accurate, I'm like 90% confident we'll find something in this place. <laughs> okay. <laughs> the voice in my ear is Taylor Potts, my longtime dorm bestie at Zephyr University, and the president of the college's Occult History and Science Investigation Club, aka the OHSIC. I hope I don't gotta say that often. Meanwhile, there's me, the vice president, if only because I'm the only other member who consistently shows up to the meetings. And that's mostly because I feel bad for Taylor putting in all this work for the club. That's why I'm here tonight, of course. Why I'm at the steps of Gallagher Mansion, dressed in some very uncomfortable nines, with a desperate ghost hunter waking, walking me through a desperate plan. Long story short, the student union is a meeting away from dropping support for the OHSIC. I'm gonna say OSIC instead. We've had trouble retaining members for a while now, and the facility we use for our meetings is utterly wasted on the two of us. Yikes. Their words, not mine. What do you mean you're done funding the club? The OHSIC is an incredibly important resource for students to explore their spirituality, their heritage, their culture! Please do not kick me. Okay. Listen, Mr. Potts, I've pulled enough strings letting out the club for so long in the first place, but I can't defend you when we're not seeing results. You hear this spooky music? That's probably that's half the reason why I played it. Spooky month. So I felt appro it felt appropriate. You still have a freaking anime club! All they do is watch movies and spend money on imported snacks! That's gotta be violating some kind of rule about appropriating funds or something. First of all, it's the Japanese Culture and Heritage Club. Oh yeah. Secondly, they actually retain regular members, as do many other clubs. <laughs> It's called the Japanese culture. Way to sugarcoat it, union chairperson. If you can't engage with the students of this university, you're not really providing anything of value. Space is a premium too. You know that everyone on campus is going gaga for that newly proposed juggling club, and they'd appreciate a room that's barely being used as it is. To juggle? The juggling club? The juggling club! You can't do that to us! <laughs> this guy got paid. I think it's the juggling club to I think it's the juggling club part that's gotten him to him the most. Taylor's logic? Clowns juggling things? Clowns are scary and evil, therefore the juggling club by default is scary and evil. There's gotta be another way! Please! What do you need us to do to save the club? <laughs> Maybe go under the desk and explore something? All you need is a few more members. Doesn't matter how you do it, as long as you can show us that the OSICO is still relevant to the student body. That's not the initials to our club. OHSIC. Oh. <sighs> mm-hmm. Yes, that. It's on their pin. Don't be stupid now. That's how it went down yesterday morning, according to Taylor. Later that afternoon, before I could start going through the motions for our meeting agenda. Okay, okay, here's the plan. You know that old house way out there on the corner of town? That old Gallagher place where all those deaths and murders happened ages ago? That's a lot. 
the pluralness of it. We've never checked it out. We thought it was too boring, too vanilla. But no! Maybe we made a mistake trying to find new things when we've left the biggest stone in town unturned. Okay, but has anything changed about the place since the last time we looked at it? Tomorrow, we're gonna investigate the old dump. I just know there's something we can find in there. It's our last hope! How was I getting us members? Vice Prez, tonight we're hitting the books. Research like your life depends on it. And by we're investigating, Taylor meant that I go there in person by myself while he provides intel via earpiece back at HQ. So I am alone. Not the smartest thing to do. Just letting you know. This place is illuminating blue fog and whatnot. And you're gonna let me just go there by myself. Okay. Don't be mad if I come out with a baby girl. Don't be mad. That's your fault. HQ is Taylor's car, of course. Maybe we could paint it like Ecto-1 and get a few members that way. Uh, status? You've been a little quiet. Over. God. How come I haven't named myself yet? Back to the over thing, huh? Oh, uh, I'm doing okay, just thinking. Don't get cold feet now, buddy. We need you now more than ever. You've dealt with the paranormal before, and you've rocked their world. Are you worried about your lines? What? I have a script? No, I've got the script down all right, though. My tuxedo's a little hard to breathe in. I'm worried about tripping on my gown. My wedding attire is a lot to get used to. Ah, what a creative way to do pronouns here. That's cute, I'm not gonna lie. Um, I would like to wear a dress, thank you. <laughs> well, I'm worried about tripping on my gown. Can I at least take my heels off? Oh, heels. I roll the skirt up a few inches and do I still have to do the veil thing? Over. Sorry, no can do. You've got to look the part for when you fall into the cold, dead arms of Elias Gallagher. Over. <laughs> Understood. I'll look all classically ravishing as possible. Over. As I say that, I quickly adjust my outfit anyway. Taylor can't see me over the earpiece, anyhow. I may as well be comfortable, and maybe even a little disheveled, as benefits... Oh, as befits someone with so with my sorrowful tale. I'm at the door. How's the rose? The singular rose? Immaculate. Then go for it, buddy. You're about to change our lives. Can I ask you one more question before I start the mission? Shoot. Do, like, court entertainers or whatever still exist in Victorian times? I don't really know if they did. Or why you're asking me that? I already forgot what I said. <laughs> I'm just saying, what if Elias Gallagher isn't the only ghost left in this mansion? What if I run into his personal clown? G -g -g ghost clown? No! What? Accidents happen. G -g -g ghost clown? No! Why would you even suggest such a thing? I don't want to think about it. Then don't. But I could be in danger. Unless maybe it was a nice clown who could cook? Quit stalling and start the mission already! Cook. There goes Taylor hammering in the no fun allowed sign. Oh well. I turn my attention back to the facade of the mansion. It really does look too well maintained for an abandoned building. Ooh. We're gonna need something for that door. Damn! The cool brass handle turns, and the door glides open. The first thing I notice is how stale the air tastes inside the manor. The second thing I notice is how cold it is in here, even compared to the light breeze outside. The atmosphere is unnaturally frigid, though not enough to make me boil, bail out to grab a jacket, so long as I'm quick. This place has certainly seen better days. Hacker voice, I'm in. How's it looking in there, bud? 
a lot more promising now that I'm inside. Perfectly ripe for the ha for a haunting. Complete with a creepy portrait upstairs. In fact, you'd probably have an asthma attack with all this dust. Is your sixth sense tingling? No. I don't know why, but it's super cold in here. As long as I'm in a and out of here fast, I don't think I need to worry about it too much. That's reasonable. I think it's time to summon a ghost then. Bye. Roger that. About time I put that single year of high school theater to good use. No way. No way, no way. Well, here we go. Prick my finger on one of the thorns, scatter a few of the rose petals around, and then cue the monologue. I second a breath as the thorn pricks my index, channeling the pain into a sufficiently hammy performance. Alas, my poor aching heart! I clutch at my chest with one hand and lay the back of the other against my forehead, crying out into the empty halls before collapsing into a heap. The noise reverberates against the walls in a cacophony of echoes. Woe is me to have been abandoned so coldly at the altar. Why did the love of my life forsake me so? <laughs> Today was set to be the most joyous day of my mortal existence, and yet all I feel is the pull of despair into my darkest days thus. Oh, woe upon such an unfortunate soul as mine. I can hear some slow clapping and a stifled guffaw from, an, from the earpiece. All I wanted in life was to know the warmth of a lover's touch. Won't anyone take pity on me? I let loose another pathetic sound of anguish while plucking off more petals and close my eyes. Uh, this is my cue to throw tomatoes at the stage, right? I think I did pretty good, actually, Taylor. Don't be rude. Tomatoes means the performance sucks. I'm doing great, dummy. <laughs> alright, alright. Keep up the good work then, buddy old pal. Why did that sound so, like, forced? <laughs> he wants me for real. <laughs> I glance around my surroundings. I almost feel like the painting on the second floor is judging me silently. But it must be my imagination. Why should I continue to live a life unfulfilled? I almost think it's better to sleep an eternity, dreaming forevermore, rather than to suffer this cruel reality. Oh, I was supposed to say that dramatically? Let me go back. Why should I continue to live a life unfulfilled? I almost think it better to sleep an eternity, dreaming forevermore, rather than to suffer this cruel reality. I pluck off the last of the rose petals and cast away the stem. The deep crimson p speckles of my blood glimmer, sparkly in the light of the moon, now dripping through the cobweb-covered windows. Perhaps I shall die as I lived, alone, with naught but my own sorrow. If God or some kind of gentle soul has lent their ears to my pleas, then take me now! I lower my head and let a few more tears flow down my cheeks. The ritual is now complete. Truly a riveting performance. 10 out of 10, Oscar worthy, or whatever. I did amazing. I don't know what you're talking about. Hey, don't kill the atmosphere. The temperature suddenly drops to the point where it feels like my blood is freezing in my veins. Something inside my brain screams at my legs to run, but I can't move. I raise my- Welcome! <laughs> I raise my head just in time to see the rose petals scatter across the foyer. Ooh, swelling up into the air, coalescing back into the stem. I threw at the foot of the steps. Black, black, what blood is this which stains the stone entrance of the sepulchre? I can't believe that worked. Wait, who was that? <laughs> What's happening over there? <laughs> so goofy. Gosh. I've noticed some somewhat of a pattern with this person's um like style. Their hair usually is very fluffy, like if you were to touch it, you wouldn't wanna not touch it. 
And then the chesticle area, of course. Very busty individual. And birthing hips. Just wanna let that be known. My jaw drops as the vague shape of a man materializes from the top of the staircase. My mouth is suddenly too dry to form a coherent response. Elias Gallagher in his undead and ephemeral? I don't know. Ephemeral? I can read, but not that well. Glory is gliding down the steps towards me. Holy shit. Fresh blood in my esteemed estate. Stained on a red rose, no less. A tragic sight indeed. But not quite so tragic as the one who stands before me. Pray tell. <laughs> I can't believe that performance did that. I can't. Who are you? And what is your purpose here? I am trying to get my club back. What? Hey, bud. What's going on over there? Oh, now you sound like super pixelated. Don't tell me the surface is gonna mess up. Elias Gallagher, lord of this manor. My name is... Awesome Sauce! <laughs> okay. I thought I would never be able to put my name. Okay, go. And I am but someone's groom, someone's bride, someone's betrothed, someone's bride. <laughs> I am degenerate, a bride who was abandoned at the altar on the day of my own wedding. With a broken heart in my chest and tears in my eyes, I sought solace in a quiet place away from the ceremony and found myself here. Oh, oh my gosh. Poor Sorry. <laughs> Yo! This dude is busting through his seams. Busting. <sighs> Th those clothes have to be like constricting your, your airflow. Well, <laughs> nigga's dead. But still, like. Badonkers! Hello! I bet those clothes are really... They're probably really uncomfortable. You should probably take them off. You and I are not at all dissimilar indeed. Dissimilar? I am well acquainted with tragedy. <laughs> and know that your wounds need tending to at once. How are you gonna do that? <clears throat> Tell me. Would you like to forget the cur who broke your heart? Cur? I like that word. <laughs> Hook, line, and sinker. Which one? Me or him? Ah, oh, yes. I would not hesitate if there was such a way to ease my sorrows. But I fear it won't be a simple matter. Nonsense, my dear. I can melt away your anxiety and regrets. For it is within my power as long as you remain inside these four walls. Now, will you accept this rose, darling? He holds out the rose I shredded up not too long ago. The blood gone from the petals, and thorns absent from the stem. Hey! Hey, bud! What's going on there? The wine's going haywire over here! That's unfortunate, buddy. Uh, I'm gonna have to talk to you later. I reach up towards Elias to take the rose from his, from his hand, and our knuckles brush against each other. Such is deathly cold. I will. I'm requesting a report! Do you, do you need backup? Answer me! As you were saying... Wonderful, darling. <laughs> Elias' hand glides up to my cheek, caressing it gently and phasing through my skin. Now even death won't do us part. Mm. Don't fucking tell me I died. The distinct cry of a carnival mystery. A long wail, a pained moan, looping through the walls and dancing on the flowers. Am I dead? Did this 
bitch kill me? The petals shake. Stamens and pistols tremble. And perfume avalanche is upon me. A billion sins as strong as a forgotten sun. Strong enough to sting my eyes. <laughs> Ooh, a bedroom? <laughs> We're getting... We're getting busy already? I rub my eyes and open them to a blue ceiling. What the hell? Where am I? As I ask, the wails and moans shaking my bones cease. They were my breath. Just my breath. And that carnival mystery? The phone's still ringing, but it's not in any of my pockets. This wedding garb was a huge mistake. The hands scamper around the sheets of the bed, searching for my phone. Trying to answer to- Hang on. Bed? My eyes remember- I think I messed up on that last one. It's my hands were scampering around, not the hands. I apologize. My eyes remember to look at more the s more than the ceiling, and along with the rest of my senses, waking up and processing information, sure enough, I find myself in some ancient bedroom. I catch a flicker of light amongst the disheveled sheets and snatch it to me. My phone screen glows like a comforting little lantern. I accept Taylor's call and... Oh, God! I've tried you like 50 times already since the call dropped. What the hell happened? I think I died, bro. I don't... I don't really know. Where am I? Are you still in the mansion? No, I left. Somehow I had forgotten where I was, what had happened. My cheek twinged with the memory of a chill, ethereal touch. Elias. The touch from Elias. A ghost touched me? Right? <laughs> Seems like that's the theme here. We love it when things that normally wouldn't be able to touch you can touch you. <coughs> right? That actually did happen? And it wasn't just some sleep-deprived hallucination I had from all of Taylor's ramblings, right? Hey! Hey, bud! Don't climb up now! Oh, um, I guess I, uh, not outside at least. Describe your location! Comfortable. Well, everything around me is still dimly lit in a more shade of blue, so that's a good sign. Well, good might not be the right word. And the decor certainly looks the- wait, hang on. This is still inside the mansion, right? Lights and decor are one thing, but this room surely doesn't look like it's moments from falling apart. Well, if the outside was nice. <laughs> the sheets I'm lying in upon are coarse but in perfect condition, as fresh as the day they were woven on some state-of-the-art petal loom. The mattress holds my weight with a sense of duty, and the pillows couldn't be fluffier. The paint on the walls, which are peeling away in the foyer, hold immaculately tight here with not a chip in sight. No cobwebs or holes or even a speck of dust floating upon the air. The portraits and paintings all hang straight and untorn with gilded golden frames. The pots and vases without any cracks in their porcelain. Even the air is a far cry from moss and bird's nest if you ignore the stale taste. And now that I'm calmer, I also notice that I'm wearing a pair of soft, silken gloves. I don't recall bringing with me when I came in. Were these a gift from Elias? Hey, hang on. Look at this bedroom. I take a quick set of photos and upload them to Taylor. Wait! A bedroom? Yeah! Chambers. <laughs> He'd probably say. I guess it's a lot nicer than the foyer. Nothing's falling apart, nothing's stained. It does look like part of the same house, though, some general decor. Huh. Maybe the door was locked and nobody got in? This place is a known party hub, after all. 
Maybe the co-eds and whoever else wrecked everything they could reach, but they just couldn't get into here. That seems unlikely. A century of no one visiting would still do damage to a locked room. It's not like it's sealed away from the rest of the world. Unless... Was it just this room? A special place for me? Hey Taylor, can I ask you for a favor? Yeah, what's up? Can you like, brief me on the mission again? You're kidding, right? No. Research. Oh. Just little mini bios. I just woke up and I'm pretty sure there's a ghost floating around here eager to meet me, so come on. Uh, yeah, alright, you're right. Let's play 20 questions to catch you up to speed here. Okay. What the? Why? Um. Okay. Why am I here? Who were the Gallagher's? <laughs> Shameless. How did the Gallagher's die? Who killed Elias Gallagher? This feel. I don't know why I'm saying that now. This was different compared to last time. I think I'm all caught up. I would like to know. I think I already know who I. Why I'm here. We know what we're doing. Um. Who killed Elias Gallagher? Elias himself was murdered long after the Gallagher curse had axed off the rest of, the, of his family. But who killed him? That would be Violet and Gerard Dupont. Why? Gerard was the Gallagher groundskeeper, and after the rest of the family died, he decided to get a little ambitious. Don't think that guy was gay, though. Otherwise, I imagine he would have gone after Elias himself. What does that have to do with anything? I'm sorry? So, he introduced his sister Violet to Elias as a fellow heiress without a partner. You can guess what happened next, right? No, I'm kind of slow, I'm sorry. That, <laughs> that last part kind of took me off guard. I'm like, why did that matter? The whole courtship dance, a romantic proposal, and a wedding to write home about? Everything but the wedding, yes. Okay. According to the newspapers we dug up, Elias died the night before his wedding ceremony while the Duponts were caught red-handed tearing the place apart, looking for the Gallagher fortune. Watch, there's nothing. And then the rest is history. Right, um, let's ask who they were. So who exactly were the Gallaghers in the grand scheme of things? The Gallaghers were a well-off military family from Europe who came to America in the mid-1800s. Archibald Gallagher, the patriarch of the family, found success as a cornmeal baron. Mm -hmm. He married a woman named Mildred, and together they had a total of seven children. All of the Gallaghers were quite exceptional, except for... He did not waste any time. Elias? Elias was the black sheep of the family. All of his other siblings were born strong and healthy, but Elias's birth came with a lot of complications. What kind of complications? Nigga looks like America's next top model. He's got birthing hips. <laughs> he was bedridden for most of his life, wasn't he? Pretty much the epitome of the sickly Victorian child trope. Oh yeah, 1800s, sorry. <laughs> I don't think you should put it that way. I can almost hear Taylor shrug from the earpiece. How did the Gallaghers die? A lot of rumors say it was some kind of curse, but no one can agree on why they were cursed to begin with. The eldest child died first in a horse accident or something. After that, it was a chain of freak accidents in short succession, completely unrelated to the previous deaths. But without fail, it would always kill the next eldest child like a line of dominoes, hitting the rest of them in some pretty gruesome ways. So they didn't have kids? They didn't think, hey, if this is happening, we should probably get busy, right? <laughs> like, what's going on here? Yikes. I think Archibald and Mildred Gallagher weren't too happy about having to write Elias down as their sole heir once the others were gone but somehow he'd managed to dodge the curse. Did he? He looks pretty dead. 
Then, not long after amending the will, the parents drowned in a bridge collapse on what was supposed to be a leisurely carriage ride. Same energy as scented candles setting fire to your apartment. Talk about depressing. There was, still is, plenty of speculation about Elias spinning elaborate murder schemes to take down his family. But the thing is, Elias had few people to write letters to, and even fewer people who'd write back. Elias became a permanent shut-in after becoming the head of the Gallagher estate. Eh, I'd probably do that too if it happened to me. Sheesh, no kidding. This feels different compared to last time. You know, this mission feels different compared to the last time I had an encounter with a paranormal. Uh, <laughs> uh. What? I, I, uh, that's because the last mission I sent you on wasn't a real thing. That was a fake paranormal incident. <laughs> No wonder our club was going to shit. Hey! After we posted your reactions on the internet, we- Ugh, Accidents. I apologize. Hey! After we posted your reactions on the internet, we did get some new members. Where are they now? Nowhere? Right. For a little bit, then they left, and it was just you and me again. Taylor lets out a deep sigh at the other end, and that's the end of that. Don't ask why I'm here anyway. You're really asking me- <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Taylor inhales deeply before continuing. You're on a field mission to investigate Gallagher Mansion, so we can find evidence that ghosts exist, therefore proving that the OHSIC still has value to Zephyr University Student Union. How many times did you have to do that line? <laughs> Besides finding a ghost, we're also looking to see if we can figure out where that old Gallagher fortune might be. Treasure hunting isn't our primary goal, but it's worth keeping an eye out for. The newspaper clippings we found always said how huge the inheritance was, but some assets were never accounted for in the banks. Rumor has it that the Gallaghers kept part of the fortune somewhere in the estate. That sounds about right. Thanks for the recap. Hey. <laughs> Thanks for catching me up, Taylor. Of course, bud. I glance around my surroundings again. The door leading out of this room, out to somewhere only Elias could know, beckoned me forward. I had to know what lay behind, beyond. I think I'm gonna explore more. Whoa, whoa, whoa! Hold your horses! Aren't you feeling lightheaded or dizzy or anything? No. <laughs> Just a little groggy, why? You know, I've been trying to reach you for two hours! Were you even aware you've been gone that long? Maybe you had, like, a concussion or something! No. I have no idea, but I don't think I had a concussion. That touch, that really did knock me out, huh? I can barely remember. Elias didn't seem to think it was a threatening act. Did he want to put me to sleep, or does he not know his own strength? When I collapsed, what did you hear? I kept hearing that guy's voice, and a rush of air. So, was it really Elias? Uh, uh, <laughs> uh, <laughs> I guess. This is another one of your fake incidents, is it? I know I shouldn't have asked that. Taylor wouldn't pull that on me twice. But after everything I've been through tonight, it jumped off my tongue in desperate skepticism. No, of course not! Mm-hmm. So you really did see THE Elias Gallagher? I think I touched him, too. Okay, I'm coming in. We have to get you out of there. You should have been here already. Wait, hang on. Why? This is what we came here came for, though. And we don't know what's going on now that Elias is active. Listen, Taylor. You're the one who's the actual ghost fanatic. The only... I only hang out with you at the OSHA because... O-H-S-I-C! If that's gonna keep happening, I'm gonna shoot myself. Whatever. Look, you finally have your proof that ghosts really do exist, and now you're calling a retreat? It's a tactical retreat! I was kinda prepared to find a ghost, but not for you to go MIA for two whole hours! Calm down. I'm no longer MIA. Okay, he's got a fair point there. I almost feel a little guilty at how hard he's hyperventilating. Please calm down. <laughs> I'm sorry for worrying you. 
I'm gonna just tell him to calm down. Tether, please calm down. I'm still here. I'm okay. Take a few deep breaths. Ha! <sighs> ha! <sighs> Fine. Yeah. Deep breaths. Great. Taylor's labored breath slowly even out as I imagine him wiping some non-existent sweat off his brow. So, if that ghost had the power to put you to sleep, he must be a lot stronger than we anticipated. Bro. <laughs> Just knocking me out? That's nothing. I don't think he's gonna hurt me though, after all, he wants to court me. You two just met! So? That, that's rushing into things! What? So much for catching his breath. That was our plan, wasn't it? To trick him into thinking that I was also supposed to get married, and well, we succeeded. I can just barely hear the faint gnashing of teeth on the other end. Right! Yeah. Okay. Exactly. Look, I'm still coming in to give you a hand. I trust that guy about as far as I can throw him. Which isn't very far, well, considering, you know, he's a ghost. Right. Well, if you're coming in, I'm heading out. Don't know what I'll find, but I'm bored of this bedroom. No, no, no! You stay right there! We have no idea what that dude's up to! I'm bored. Well, according to you, I was sent on this field mission because I have the stronger body and no dust allergies. Just stay on the line, all right? Let's see what happens. The door ha opens to a house alive. The chill is gone and the dim light from the windows flows through the, wall the halls like a river undammed. I think this is the same. This is the same house, after all. The walls are chipped, the floorboards creak, and a hundred ornate doors beckon to be opened. A mystery behind each and every one. I'm just as lost now as I was before I fall asleep. I'm out of the bedroom, no signs of Elias, or any other ghosts for that matter. I think I'm still in the mansion. You think? Ugh. Okay then, I'll stay put for now. But if we're gonna do this, then you need to give me a status report. Mm-hmm. Okay, so... You know how cold I was when I first entered? That's not a problem anymore. The whole manor is... What's one step from cozy? No response except that might be Taylor biting his lip. What might be? As he contemplates the situation, I hear another voice. It sounds happy. <laughs> <laughs> it's humming a melody unfamiliar to me, all at once wistful and joyous and despondent. The harmony of dissonance fills the house, even though they barely outdo the whisper. And despite the echoes crawling like slugs along the walls, I know exactly where the sound originates. I think I know where Elias is. I'm going to try to find my way back to him. If the house really has returned to its full glory, is it because of Elias? If it's not freezing in there anymore, that has to mean something. Or maybe I just can't feel the cold anymore. I think you've really awakened him. Care to elaborate? Your presence has given him something he hasn't had in forever. I think this house conforms to his spectral energy. We've made him happy. Oh. You've satisfied part of his <laughs> wish for romance, but I, mm, I... I want you to be very careful about how that wish gets entirely fulfilled, okay? Huh? Okay. I haven't been paying much attention to where I'm going, but my feet have walked on without a second thought. Through twisting halls to, other, to another dimly lit room. And to Elias Gallagher. Look at that. We're like attached. We're magnets. Oh my gosh. I I just can't get over how thick this man is. Like. <laughs> Sorry. I peek into the study as quiet as I can. Sands the creaky door hinges so as to not disturb Elias. I spy him holding a few volumes of some old book collection in his arms as he pers pursues a crowded shelf. I can't help but notice the content smile resting on his lips. 
Once satisfied with his haul, Elias floats over to an armchair and sets the books on a nearby accent table, making sure they're in his prefer preferred order. A pot of tea and some snacks wait for him to sit down. Wait, can a ghost even eat or drink? Contemplating the question, I lean forward to get a better look. The door's creaking as it's unintentionally pushed further open. <gasps> Hello? Whoops. I've ruined his reading time. He spotted me. Oh, my dearest. Wait there. He hurries over, ghostly tail slicing through the carpet. And in quiet instance, instant, Elias floats before me, chest puffed dramatically. You're right about that. Please, my dear. You mustn't wander around. Things remain out of sorts. Mm-hmm. Ugh. I did my best to ignore Taylor's annoyed groan. <laughs> but when I heard you humming, my feet began to move on their own. A chord? Why you must have summoned me here to grant you company. We're talking in that way. I like it. Sure, the line was cheesy, but was it wholly inaccurate? I was drawn to a lie somehow by something. And here I thought I had been quiet so as to not disturb your slumber. Sincerest apologies for rousing you from your rest. Ugh. I love this type of talk. It's so romantic. No need for apologizing, my dear, for I had already awoken. Elias cocks his head. <laughs> and yet, that changes little about the unreadiness of this manner. That's fine. You expect me to sleep the whole time? After all, I have <laughs> to do all this cleaning myself. Oh. Simply look at the state of this study. Poor baby. Oh, it's so far gone from its glory days. Didn't you say it was pristine? He can't hear you, bro. I did, and I stand by that. Virology Labs wish they were in the were, they were this clean. Uh oh, he's talking to me. Either Elias is a perfectionist beyond compare, or he and I are seeing two different versions of the manor. And yet, I find these rooms quite beautiful. Just wait, and be amazed. Bye. I will have to find new staff quite soon. Sadly, they did not stay with me as I left my body behind. Oh, if only they had. If only. Ah, uh, sorry. Now, now, don't get too preoccupied with the with the staff. You have all the time in the world to replace them. On the contrary, arrangements must be made with all haste. Mhm. Mm uh, arrangements for what? Our wedding, of course. Why did we- why did we even ask? Taylor chokes on his spit through the earpiece while I stand there and <laughs> replay the last sentence in my head. I can't blame Elias for wanting to rush after decades of waiting, but... Taylor mutters something indiscernible under his breath. I feel the same, though. I might be in more trouble than I expected. But I've only just been left at the altar, my dear. A long time for you has only been a sunset for me. I ask you graciously to let us seek a compromise. Elias tilts his head once more, eyes locked with mine. But your heart... Uh, it'll recover. I can hear <laughs> its soft, gentle tears fall upon your soul. I promise you, my dearest, that a heart does not heal easily. No matter how many tales of tragedy and hardship one may read, reality is much more painful. Mm. Why, my own heart has been broken more than a dozen times over the course of my life. And alas, it has never once healed, only turned to an aching scar. And I have tried my damnedest to ignore these wounds, to let them bleed out and coagulate into some semblance of strength. Coagulate. But it left me sickly Coagulate. instead. If a heart is to be mended, surgery must be immediate. Elias takes my hands into his cold, ethereal grasp. And here before you is someone who can mend your broken heart. Someone who can cherish you, 
stay with you, create happiness for you. Yeah. I never had that chance in my own mortal life. And after so long, my dearest, I want you to choose happiness, not sorrow. And I want to be the one to give you that happiness. <laughs> His eyes are up there. Pay attention. I'm flattered. It's. It doesn't help that the the text is right in front of his bustling chest. So, <laughs> something in his words rings truer to my heart than I could have expected. All I'm doing is playing along, acting my part. But I had actually been left at the altar. Would I? Whatever you do, do not trust him at all. <laughs> How about you refrain from speaking? Yeah. Taylor's voice snaps me from my thought. But also, don't do anything to upset him. Play it as cool as possible. <laughs> as a cucumber. Elias gave you a very thin rope to walk. Don't fall down. Do you understand? Yeah. Okay, okay, I got this. I can walk a tightrope. Or at least fake it. Why not show me what else there is to the Elias Gallagher? There is to Elias Gallagher. Let me indulge in my room before I marry my husband. Ha ha! Wah! Sorry, what? <laughs> I read that all wrong. Let me do it again. Why not show me what else there is to Elias Gallagher? Let me indulge in my room before I marry my husband. Yes. Yes. We shall do that. But I cannot wait forever either. The taste of eternity I've already supped upon is nigh unbearable. Join your groom in helping him plan our wedding. Taylor once more grumbles something inaudible. And what does my dear groom need help with? Elias gives a thoughtful pause. Now let me think. Ah, I'd love your assistance with the floral arrangements. I have all the flowers of New England in my hands. It shall be difficult to select only a few. To prove his claim, he presents his open palms to me and a smorgasbord of tiny sample flower sprouts. Flowers sprout and bloom for my pursual. That's so many. You have to narrow it down for me, else I could never choose. And surely you'd want me to be selective. Of course. And after that, a cake. I know my grandmother's recipes are still in this house, and I should set off on finding them. I've tasted them all when I was still in the flesh, and they're delightful. As such, I leave the choice of cake to you. Mm-hmm. I can certainly do that. And finally, since you'll be marrying into my distinguished family, I'm eager to bestow upon you a gift suitable of that prestige. Ooh. I shall lead you to my treasury, and introduce you to the family jewels. The family jewels, huh? <laughs> Okay. Taylor Snickers. All right. You one letter off. I can't help. I can't help it. I laugh too, but try to mask it tastefully. Delightful. So I shall pick the jewelry I wear for you? Precisely. That's why he was laughing. <laughs> I made the joke. Or I implied what I meant. Or what he... What well, it could have meant, also. But of course... I thought it was funny, yeah. Very well, and with that I believe we have reached an agreeable compromise. Then let us begin! Take my hand, and I'll lead you to the greenhouse. <laughs> Elias's hand is nearly as cold as earlier, but my fingers face through his just slightly all the time. All the same. It's enough to simulate the gesture of holding hands, at least. Satisfied with the arrangement, he leads me out of the study and back through the halls. As we walk, I re-examine my surroundings. It really is hard to believe just how much of a glow-up this place got. Hey, partner. How are we holding up? Splendid. I've always wanted to hold hands with the man I love. Elias casts me aside, a sideways glance and blushes. 
I don't have to hear. <laughs> I don't have the heart to tell him that I'm. I don't really mean it. We passed. Through, that's so mean. <laughs> we passed through the foyer on our way to the other end of the mirror manor. Two hours. I was knocked out for a huh? Elias is practically dragging me at this point. <laughs> oh gosh. <laughs> The set of hallways is almost identical to the other end. Sands the glass double doors around the corner. Elias phases through so he can unlock and hold them open for me. After you. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I take a step through the doorway, entering a world of flora. Seems the greenhouse still works as intended. You shuddered a little. Is there a chill, my dear? <laughs> I don't know, is there? No, quite the opposite, why I'm surprised at how lovely the greenhouse looks already. Perhaps I'm exaggerating a bit, I can't even tell what plants used to grow in these planters. My bouquet would be here, Elias could likely turn this from depressing to delightful before I could blink. Do you need any help restoring this greenhouse to its former glory? I did, but no longer. Behold! <laughs> I watched Elias's eager hands <laughs> dance upon the trellis tre, tre yeah, the T word. And without any more than a simple flourish, dozens of flowers, this time in full size and bloom, await my pursual. Voila! My dear, your flowers. Can I see them? My eyes and nose are drawn to three flowers in particular, none of which should be growing on the trellis. An act of defiance, paranormal willpower, or simply Elias forging his botany? Forgetting his botany. A classic red rose, it seems to be a different variant than the one I bought with me inside the manor, though not a climbing rose. A dazzling orange zinnia. The color reminds me of the soda I bring to the club room, though that's probably the least poetic thing to think about right now. And finally, a cute bunch of lyre flowers, vibrant and pink amongst the other blooms. I've always enjoyed their cheerful presence whenever I pass them by. And there's more. Much more if these don't delight you. No, no, I think, I think one of these shall, be delight, shall delight us both. And which will that be, my dear? Dang, I don't know. I know what a rose looks like because I'm not an idiot, right? Let's find out what a zinnia looks like. Okay. Pretty. <laughs> of course. A liar flower? A liar flower is pretty. Not. Uh, uh, how would you put that in a bouquet, though? It's pretty and pink. I like it. I'm gonna pick the rose. I feel like it's appropriate. The rose is always a classic choice. Red means love, yes? Red on a rose means true love, undying love, eternal love. All right. Sounds about right. Taylor's, <laughs> Taylor's had me flick through a few books on flower language over the years, hoping we could lure out some ghosts with the right blooms, but I could never keep the meaning straight in my head. Maybe Elias was the type. Red roses were easy. Would he know more? Yes, I think it's... Uh, I think it's a perfect choice for us, then. Do you have a vase? Of course. Mm-hmm. With the flick of his wrist, a pile of dust on the other side of the room collapses. And in his grasp, he holds a perfectly clean, nearly translucent glass face. Acceptable? Yeah. Much more than acceptable, and something to cut the flowers? Oh. And gloves to handle the thorns. Of course! He provides me with the tools and I set to work. Do I need to trim the stems before putting them in the vase? I think there was a trick to removing the thorns, but if I knew it, if I knew it, it's long gone. Careful. Simply go slowly, and the rose will happily let its guard drop. 
What are you talking about? <laughs> what are we talking about? I guide the knife he provided slowly up the stem as parallel as possible, and when the blade hits a thorn, it cuts through like butter. There you are. See? Not a thing to be afraid of. Not a moment that needs to be rushed. This, uh, this, uh, this whole day has been a rush, hasn't it? Sure, in the sense, in the sense of I've literally met a ghost after years of trying, but also all the pressure. I had less than 48 hours to prepare for my own wedding, even if it was fake. All the sudden research, all the desperate planning, and not a breath in between. My hands slow to a crawl. And I savor the moment, pruning each thorn one by one. They fall to the greenhouse floor, decorating the tile in reddish-green points. Eventually, there are no more thorns to prune. I add another rose to the vase, hoping it looks okay, then another. Splendid! Now, did you have thoughts on accoutrements? Accent flowers, that is. Accoutrements! I couldn't even say that properly. Oh right, this is just a half dozen roses, not a full bouquet. I hadn't thought about it. If Elias is that into flowers, would you suggest some for us? My pleasure and my honor. You got it. First, some baby's breath. Huh? Fake the flower language. If you get it right, he'll be happy. If you get it wrong, he'll have the joy of correcting you. This voice hisses in my ear. Baby's breath, that's something about youth, correct? In this bouquet, more a symbol of innocence and purity. Right. Because I'm so innocent and pure. Oh, I hope he doesn't get weird about purity because I'm, I definitely cannot meet Victorian standards. They work stunningly when used sparingly. One may expect that their small size must be bolstered by great numbers, but that's simply not true. I try to take his advice. The little white flowers slip between the roses, resting like snowflakes suspended mid-fall. Elias could make roses bloom in winter, couldn't he? I think about what an odd wedding that would be. But his hands continue to guide me, raising the baby's breath up a smidge. Do you see how that little bit of elevation gives the whole bouquet a sense of dynamism? Personality. Dynamism? <laughs> I love, like, discovering new words. How much is a smidge here? Here. Oh. I said that wrong, but it's fine. He reaches out, and his hand flows through the stems, through the petals, and through my fingers, lifting my hand along with the flowers ever so gently. Just like that. Uh. Shh. And would we like more flowers in this bouquet? Yes, I think so. What would you say to lemon balm? I'd ask how closely related they are to lemons. <laughs> oh my gosh! He's a comedian! There's Taylor with the snark again, of course. Only some leaves, green and small. Perfect for filling in the gaps and adding a rich aroma. Mmm. Because otherwise flowers don't have a scent. You cannot tell me otherwise. Do they mean something about sweetness? Probably best not to ask about sourness. Sympathy and compassion. Though speaking of sweetness, these leaves do make a nice tea. Nice. Ah, perhaps you could brew us a few cups when we're done here? Oh, what an excellent idea. Yes, I think we shall have that lemon balm tea. Alright, let's save some of this for the kettle. I tuck some of the leaves around the edge of the vase, and following Elias' suggestions with the baby's breath, I make sure to raise some up too. I try to keep it beneath the more exciting flowers, but every now and then I make sure a few of the little buds of baby's breath barely peek out from the bottoms of the lemon balm. Elias watches me with a polite smile, the same one I've seen so many times now, but his eyes are brighter, giving him, giving him away again. This time he's trying to downplay his joy. Would you like to help arrange? 
I would love to. <laughs> I would like to arrange. And Elias returns his hands to the vase, carefully making sure that what he adds complements what I've composed. Even though I've never done this before, even though I've never looked so closely at a bouquet, I can tell what I've touched and what he's touched. And honestly, all together looks pretty good. Lovely. Thank you. <laughs> I think one last flower. And you should choose, my dear. Really? Again? <laughs> sure. He shows me two different flowers. One of flat, delicate yellow petals and another of thin, wispy strands of purple. I don't recognize either. If it's my choice again, I choose to savor it, to roll the flowers around in my head. And I let them delight me. Why not? I don't have to understand their meanings to find them beautiful. The yellow ones. The yarrow. Excellent. Yarrow. What does a yarrow look like? I admit that I'm unfamiliar with these. A symbol of everlasting love. <laughs> You're such a flirt. Again? Yeah. I choose ever I chose everlasting everlasting love twice. Double eternity. Look at that. I try not to think about it. They're only flowers, after all. Elias and I return our hands to the bouquet, adding the final touches. The flowers look absolutely gorgeous, my dear. But still nowhere near as lovely as you. Stop! Oh my gosh. Thank you, Elias. I can feel my heart hammering on my chest. They're just plants. Innocent little flowers. Flowers with too many meanings. Too many promises. Is something the matter, dearest? You look a bit pale. I'm fine. I'm hunky dory. I, um. I must admit that I'm a bit tired. Would it be alright for me to rest a little before we continue preparing for the ceremony? Of course. You mustn't exert yourself too much. Please feel free to choose any room on the ground floor. Though, you'll have to excuse the state of disarray it may be in. Thank you, my love. And do not worry about the mess here. I shall clean up and rejoin you after I check something in the study. Okie dokie. Elias bows and I turn to leave the greenhouse. Bows. Oh, this guy. My steps feel heavy as I return to the hallway. I wasn't expecting floor arrangements to be that intense. Hey, are you doing alright now? Yeah. I'll live. Might be time to see what you can get up to before your rendezvous with Elias. Mm-hmm. I nod my head as if Taylor can somehow see th see me through the earpiece. Back to where it all began, the dust isn't so thick now. And while it doesn't look all too fabulous compared to the rest of the place, it looks a little less uninviting. Hey, you remember that painting I mentioned before in the foyer? On the second floor. Yep. What about it? There's nothing there. <laughs> I think I can make out a few of the details better now. Maybe even get a pic of it. I test my foot on the first step and angle my camera up to snap a photo of the frame. When the dead is when the deed is done, I text it to Taylor. Here you go. If I had to hazard a guess, then this style of painting would be impressionism. It was all the rage in the late 19th century, so it'd fit the timeline. Know anything about the subject? It's probably a portrait of one of the Gallagher ladies. What better way to flaunt wealth and status than by paying someone to preserve your likeness with expensive materials? Mm-hmm. I zoom in on the photo. I took, I took and studied the details. I assume Taylor's doing the same. Those earrings and necklace, and the size of that ring too, damn. That's too rich for my blood. Probably the precious family jewels Elias was telling you about. <laughs> Taylor Snickers. <laughs> oh my gosh, Taylor Snickers. I roll my eyes with a groan. Anyways, I'll look into this and see if I can get an exact match for who it might be. Keep hunting around? Roger that.
This door is bothering me. Did it have to do all that? No, it didn't. Anyways, we're going to end the video right here. This so far is pretty fun, not gonna lie. And it was the perfect way to start um, Spooky Month, you know, with a ghost. So if you guys enjoyed this video, give it a little like, you know, because like, why not? If you enjoy Spooky Month and you enjoy busty men, do it for do it for the busty men. <laughs> and uh, subscribe for more videos just like this. And with that being said, I will see you guys next time.